Hey guys, welcome back to Sudoku Maniacs. I know I've been away for a long time. Every time I think I'll become more frequent, but then I end up caught up with something or the other, and my chair seems to be in having a mind of its own. It seems to be wobbling around, <laughs> just trying to get adjusted. So yeah, apologies for the delay. Hope you guys are enjoying the Android app that we had developed. If you have not downloaded it, I'm putting the link in the description of the video. So you can go ahead, try it out because the app allows you to play our daily Sudokus with through, within the app itself instead of logging on to the website. And your scores and time are automatically updated in the leaderboard. So coming back to this puzzle. Now this was an anti-diagonal Sudoku that I had, sorry, hosted yesterday on my website. Now this was definitely not an easy one. And it had a very tricky, what you say, deduction step that was involved. And if some of the top players in the world took out anywhere around four minutes on this, then I can easily tell you that a layman would take about minimum 10 minutes on this. So I thought, and since I had not covered an anti-diagonal in detail, why not have a showcase of this and also speak to you all about some of the basic techniques that are involved in an anti-diagonal. Now coming to the rules. Rules are that the rules of classic Sudoku apply. That is no digit can repeat in any row column or a 3 by 3 bold outline box. Additionally, two diagonals are marked. Now, unlike a regular diagonal Sudoku, where the diagonal also contains unique 1 to 9 digits, in a, an anti-diagonal Sudoku, the three, basically each diagonal will have only three digits on it. So basically, the three digits that we see in R9C1, R8, C2, that is row 8, column 2, and row 7, column 3. These three digits will repeat along the diagonal in those three boxes. Similarly, the top left to bottom right diagonal also would have three digits, which would be repeating. All right. Now, the first thing that you should be noting is, noticing is the row 5, column 5 is the junction cell for both these diagonals. That means any digit that is placed in row 5, column 5 will occur on both the diagonals. All right? So, how do you determine what that is? So, for example, again, I'm not actually starting this all here, but I'm just explaining. When I look at the pencil marks here, I can't have a 9, 8, 7. I can have a 6. I can't have a 5, 4 but I can have a three, two, I can have a one. I can have three digits, right? But when I look at box seven, the digit three can, is not on the diagonal, which means it cannot occur at in this cell. So I can remove that three. Similarly, the one of box one is not on the diagonal, which means it will not repeat again on the diagonal because these three digits, which are on the diagonal in box one, will have to be on the diagonal in box 5 in the same direction that is continuation and which would also repeat here. So we can also use that to eliminate 1 and get a 6. Correct? So this is one way as in you use the digits which are not on the diagonal to eliminate them from the central cell. Clear? Then secondly, if at all we find a digit which is there in a box but which cannot occur on either of the diagonals. Now in this given scenario we don't have anything of that sort. Right? Oh yes we do. Just look at this 8. It cannot be on the top right to bottom left diagonal. Correct? And neither it can be on the top left to bottom right diagonal. Which means this X shape that is formed by the 8s in the central box will not contain the 8. So the 8 has to be in these white cells only. If I were to look at it 
using the classic rules eight cannot be in these three eight cannot be here it cannot be here there would be two places where i can have an eight but using this conjunction of these two diagonals where the eight cannot we can safely eliminate the eight from there and place the eight here so this is the second technique that you use to solve an anti diagonal and these two tips and techniques rather are used quite often when you're solving an anti diagonal all right so now let's start off and like i always say when we start a variant we started like a classic all right so now we got this as 6 because the pencil marks over 1 3 6 but 1 cannot be on the diagonal neither can the 3 so we eliminate that and we got the 6 similarly we got the 8 8 8 it can be in these two cells but we know it is not on this diagonal so this cannot be an 8 this becomes an 8 so I get a pencil mark of 8 here and 8 here all right 1 1 this cannot be a 1 by classic rule so this is a 1 now all right now nothing is very evident per se when we look at all the other numbers so let's try to see now on this top right to bottom left diagonal 1 3 4 7 and 8 are not possible 6 is there so we know for sure the 6 will be on all the diagonals it cannot be here so this will be a 6 this is a 6 this is a 6 so 6 has to be in all these but since we require it how did we get this correct look at column 9 in box 3 column 9 i cannot have a 6 because the 6 is logged on the diagonal by classic rules in box 6 the 6 can be in these two places so this cannot be a 6 which means for column 9 the 6 is locked in box 9 column 9 correct but we also know the 6 has to be on the diagonal since it cannot be on these two cells it has to be here and we can eliminate it all right which gives us a 6 and a 6 6 and a 6 so we got this place so now we have placed the 6 so coming back to this in diagonal 1, 3, 4, 7 and 8 are not possible, which means 2, 5, 6 and 9. We know for sure the 6 is there and out of 2, 5 and 9, I can have only 2 of them. So let's place the pencil marks. 5 and 6 cannot be here, so this has to be a 2, 9. 5 cannot be here, so this will be a 6, 2, 9. I can't have a 9 here, right? So this will be a 2, 5, 6. Here I can have a 259 and I can have a 29 here because the 5 we have already got it in row 4. Similarly, I have a 2 and 5 here. So this would be a 69. This will be a 26 because of the 9 and 5 already available. And this will be a 259. So you see how identifying the digits that will repeat. We are eliminating all the other digits as possibilities. All right. Now, what can I have here? Let's look at the other diagonal. Okay. Hmm. Sorry about that. So let's look at the other diagonal. We know 1, 5, and 8 cannot be on the diagonal, correct? So what can I have here? 1, I can have a 2, 3, not possible, 4 is not possible, 5 again on the diagonal is not possible, 6 we already got, 7 is, sorry, not here, it would be 7 here, 8 and 9. Good enough. And here, what can I have? 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. They are all not possible. 3, 4, because we got already got a 2 and a 1. So now we know for sure, apart from 6, 
on this diagonal we can only have two three four seven so keeping that in mind this will be two three seven because we got a four and we got a here so this will be two four seven this is a four seven so this will be a two three six and here I can't have a two three four six oh I can't have a two three four or a seven so I know for sure this is a six which makes this a six that's a six and this becomes six and this and we have wrapped up all the sixes right this is a two nine two five not much breakthrough which means this will be a two three and this will be two three four seven all right because none of that can be eliminated now what else can we have hmm all right row 5 1 3 and 5 are missing 1 and 5 both are there in column 1 so this is a 3 this will be a 1 5 1 5 so this becomes a 2 4 7 and then next all right 1 5 ah yes 8 is here the Sorry, one is locked in this. We require a two nine, correct? Two nine can be anywhere, so we we'll place them. All right. So the moment I look at this two nine, I got a pair in row four, which means I can eliminate the two nine from there, and this becomes a one. So this is an eight two nine. This is an eight two nine. We can also eliminate the two from there. Uh, does that help us? Not much. Hmm. Oh, we got a six. This six nine will become a nine. So I know for sure the nine has to be on the diagonal. So nine will be locked here. This is not a two pi. So this has to be a nine. Nine nine this becomes a 9 9 cannot be here 9 is logged in these two which makes these two a 9 all right now was a so this was a 2 4 and a 2 4 7 for the row now comes the first tricky step let's look at box where can i have a 5 it cannot be in row 4 it cannot be in row 6, column 6 because it's not there on the diagonal, which means the 5 is logged here, correct? So I can't have a 5 here. So this again gives me a 2, 4 and a 7. And I have a 2, 7, 2, 4, 2, 4, 7, which is a triplet. And the only place for a 5 would be here. Alright, so this placing of this 5 was one of the tricky parts. Now 5 can be anywhere. It can also be on the diagonal here, here, and we should place it here. So this will be a 2, 5, 2, 5, 2, 5, 9. All right. Now, what next? 4 can be here. Okay. Now was the another second tricky deduction. Let's look at this cell. You now if we were to assume that 4 was on the diagonal. All right. I'll circle it. That would place a 4 in row 4, column 4, right? Again, I'm going to circle it. So 4 would not be able to hear and this would be a 4, correct? I'm just circling out the places where the 4 will fall if it were on the diagonal. So this is a 4, this would be a 4, which makes this a 4 and this a 4, correct? Which, now I require the 4 on the diagonal again here. and the only place for 4 on the diagonal would be here, which would place two 4s in column 1. I've circled out all. So this was a tricky elimination that was required. So now I know that if I this were a 4, I will have two 4s in column 1, which is just not possible by Sudoku rules. Hence, I know for sure this is going to be a 3. Now once I have a 3 on the diagonal, 3 cannot be here, so this becomes a 3. By classic rules, this is a 3 and this becomes a 3. 
this is a three and a three and we wrap up all the threes and i know this is a four seven this is a two seven but these two have to be same hence we can eliminate both two and four and we get a seven and this was the final deduction which makes this a two four seven cannot be here this becomes a seven which makes this a seven 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 this would be a two four and a two four so seven three six seven three six 7, 3, 6 we got that but yet these two fives we have not been able to crash through right the nine we know it for sure is here so i require a one two and a five I got a 1 and a 2, so this has to be a 5, which makes this a 2 and a 1. So I know for sure this is a 2, 9, 6, so which gives me a 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 5, 5, and a 1, which makes this a 5. So this has to be a 2 by classic rules, which makes this a 2. So the final 2 goes there, and we have wrapped up all the diagonals and we are nearly to the end this was a 4 9 correct 4 and a 9 and this would be a 8 and a 5 with the final digit being 4 and a 9 yes sir the system says we got it correct so if you remember there were two tricky steps involved how we use both the diagonals and the possibilities on the diagonal to eliminate one was identifying that five would be in row eight column six and eliminate the most tricky part where eliminating the four from row four uh, sorry row seven column seven and let me tell you you will face this kind of a situation a lot when you're solving an anti-diagonal sudoku if you wish to try this puzzle on your own, I have put the link in the description. Go ahead, check it out. Let me know in the comments how you found the Sudoku and also if this video was helpful to you. So hopefully I'll see you again sometime soon. Don't forget to download the Android app and yeah, you got it right. Till the next time, happy solving.